Now the world can see you for what you truly are. A legend laid bare. Powerless. Human. Afraid. Welcome back to Marvelous Videos. I'm Rylan. Originally known as Jonathan Crane, Scarecrow started off as a professor of psychology, but ended up as a psychopath. So much so, that he became one of the A-lister villains in Batman's notorious Gallery of Rogues, which is arguably one of the best, if not the best, villain roster in all of comic book history. The man is not very different from the Batman himself, as both of them rely on fear to reign over their opponents. It's just that their target audience and conduct happens to be very different. They have another thing in common as well, a tragic backstory. It'd be crazy to state that Jonathan Crane had it way worse than Bruce Wayne, and several comic issues that go over how the psychologist turned into a psychopath only prove this point. So, in today's video, we will go over Scarecrow's origin story, which more or less remains consistent throughout several issues and media. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is just a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks. Now, let's begin. Scarecrow's tragic backstory explored in detail. Bill Finger and Bob Kane introduced Jonathan Crane to the world of DC Comics for the first time in September of 1941. Crane made his debut in the story known as The Riddle of the Human Scarecrow as a professor of psychology at Gotham University. Professor Crane specialized in the psychology of fear, which he demonstrated in his students in an overtly practical class. He displayed a gun, which evoked little to no reaction from the class. That is, until he fired a shot with the gun to scare everyone. Everyone. He used the fear evoked in the hearts of the students after the gun being fired to state his point, but it was needless to say that he had gone too far with this antic. Meanwhile, he didn't exactly have the best social life in the university either, as he was often mocked for his shabby attire and scrawny appearance. In fact, it was stated that he looked like a scarecrow. They thought ill of him because even though Crane made the same amount of money as his colleagues, he never spent much on his clothing. Instead, he spent money on books which Crane considered to be a virtue over spending money on attire. However, these events also changed his relationship with money, making him desire wealth in ways that were socially unacceptable. Crane soon began to think like a criminal when he decided to sell his ability to evoke fear in exchange for money. And he did this as the thing that he was mocked for resembling, a scarecrow. Soon, he began to appear in the houses of businessmen who were wealthy to scare them into giving him money. One day, he fired a shot. It was overheard by Batman and Robin who were on patrol. They followed the sound to catch the perpetrator, but Scarecrow was able to escape. His criminal acts continued for the days to come, and soon, he had made a name for himself in Gotham City, albeit a negative one. Meanwhile, he continued to work as a professor at the university. Due to his reckless style of teaching, his firing a gun in the middle of class being an example of this, Crane was soon fired from his job. However, this time, he had a lot of money, and as such, he really did not require this job anymore. At the same time, Bruce Wayne was investigating the case of the Scarecrow, who was terrorizing the wealthy men of Gotham City. One thing led to another, and Bruce found himself visiting the president of Gotham University, where he offhandedly learned about the professor named Jonathan Scarecrow Crane getting fired. Naturally, the term Scarecrow triggered something in his brain, and he immediately spotted a connection between the professor and the new criminal on the block. Crane, having waved his newly acquired money under the nose of his superior and Bruce Wayne learning about it, made his case even stronger. Scarecrow continued with his criminal activity Activities and soon came under the radar of Gotham's police department. Batman and Robin tried to stop the man, but failed to do so. Soon, they found out that Scarecrow stole two ancient books, making the connection between the two Scarecrows even stronger. And as such, Bruce knew that he needed to use a roundabout way to crack this case. The genius detective of Gotham decided to follow his hunch, and he went after Jonathan Crane instead. He adopted the disguise of an old man and went to Crane's house looking for a phone as he lied about his car breaking down and him needing to contact a garage. In Crane's house, a Bruce in disguise pointed out the impressive collection of ancient books. He then used the phone and soon got out of the house, with the confirmation that the ex-professor from Gotham University was in fact the criminal that they were looking for. He spilled his information to Robin, only for Crane to overhear them and make his move. Too bad he could not outwit Batman, who spoke to Robin loudly with the intention to make sure that he had the right guy. A chase then commenced with a dynamic duo going after the Scarecrow. In the end, Batman and Robin were finally able to capture the man of the hour, who was then sent to jail. Scarecrow got another origin story with the comics in the 19th issue of Batman Annual, which came out in September of 1995 under the title Scarecrow, Masters of Fear. The story sent us 10 years back when James Gordon sent Batman a signal following the murder of the Dean of Gotham University and his four regents. Turns out, all five of them had died from cardiac arrest 
This happened before Light Yagami had gotten his hands on the death note, so clearly, something else was the reason behind the chain of heart attacks. The crime scene did not leave any clues, barring the fact that the victims died after being scared to death and the single piece of straw that failed at escaping with the culprit. Batman soon investigated the Gotham University records and learned that Jonathan Crane, who once again was professor of psychology, had been fired following his violent demonstration while teaching the psychology behind fear. In this story, his antic resulted in a student being injured. Batman soon tripped on a wire and found himself being greeted by a spring-loaded scarecrow. He kicked its head away, which turned out to be a terrible mistake, as the Cape Crusader soon fell victim to a powerful hallucinogen, which brought back his worst memories. Bruce Wayne relived the moment when he witnessed the death of his parents, but pushed through the painful experience before successfully leaving the building right before the detonation of an explosive. The gas Batman was subjected to was the fear toxin, a scarecrow specialty that would become his trademark weapon for the years to come. With the activities and the toxin, Scarecrow made his mark on Gotham City's underworld. He soon chalked out a deal with James B. Fontana, an industrialist, to eliminate his rivals in exchange for money. Fontana's rivals soon got attacked by the man of the hour, Scarecrow, prompting Batman to set a trap to catch the perpetrator once the news broke. Once again, Batman found himself at the receiving end of the fear toxin. Fortunately, he had arrived to the scene prepared and with precautionary measures, and ultimately gained the upper hand over Scarecrow. Following this, the ex-professor found himself as a captive in Arkham Asylum. The first two instances were more like overviews of Jonathan Crane's backstory, but there has always been more to it. How did Crane become a professor of psychology? What made him specialize in fear? What caused him to have such a loose screw that he would fire a gun in class? And why was crime his immediate response to being mocked or fired? These questions got answered with the comic series Year One, Batman Scarecrow, which took to the shelves in 2005. The story began with a serial killer on the loose. No prizes for guessing who this killer in the Scarecrow attire was. While Batman and Robin chased after this man, they were able to pinpoint his roots to Arlen, Georgia, with the help of the straw from Crane's attire. The dynamic duo soon learned about Jonathan Crane and discovered a human skull in the aviary of Keeney Manor, the place where Crane lived as a child. At the same time, Crane had hunted his former mentor down, Professor Pigeon, the man who was responsible for Crane's downfall in the professional world because Crane had fired a blank in his class to teach his students about fear. With Crane coming face to face with his ex-mentor once again, he narrated the story of his past, a past where he was abused by his great-grandmother, Mary Keeney. Mary's granddaughter, Karen Keeney, had a strict and uptight upbringing. This triggered a rebellious side within her during her youth, which resulted in her getting pregnant by Gerald Crane out of wedlock. As the emaciated child was born, Karen's grandmother took away her right to raise the child, while Karen's mother Marion asked for the child to be buried. The child was then named Jonathan Crane by Mary Keeney, his not-so-great-grandmother. Mary Keeney was a religious fanatic, and that's how she raised young Jonathan. He was forced to work long hours on the field and punished thoroughly without much reason. Crane grew up under tremendous physical and emotional torment and without much care or love. He was even bullied by others for reading. One day, Mary got to know that Jonathan was reading the works of James Joyce on the sly, a writer who had never hidden his disdain towards the Catholic Church. As the Keenies were religious fanatics, this brought Jonathan under Mary's line of fire. He argued that it was just literature, but Mary had to punish him, and that is how young Jonathan found himself locked in the family chapel. In the chapel's aviary, something prompted a flock of crows to attack Jonathan in unison, making the experience quite strange. It was something that had to be organized. But how could one organize it, or why would one do so? Time passed by, and Jonathan was out of the chapel, when one day, he spotted Mary squeezing the blood out of a dead rat onto his tuxedo. She then walked out of the manor and placed a rat on a scarecrow. Immediately, Jonathan witnessed hundreds of wild crows flock to the scarecrow to attack it. Mary Keeney had done her homework on the hunger pheromones of wild birds. She then simmered other chemicals and homegrown herbs on a low flame for 20 minutes. The potion was soon garnished with vermin and the blood of rats, after which the rat was placed on the scarecrow to attract the crows. And that is how Mary Keeney had gained control over wild crows. What made this ironical was the fact that the very thing that scared crows away became the object used to control crows, teaching Jonathan about fear and control. Being a child, Jonathan developed a fear of his great-grandmother, and rightfully so. He was tortured and tormented by her, left devoid of a regular childhood, and never got to learn or develop healthy habits. No matter how bad Bruce Wayne had it, he was never intentionally tormented by those who were supposed to love him. He lost his parents, but his parents always loved him, and Bruce knew that. The same was not applicable for Jonathan Crane. The terrible situation caused Jonathan to level up in order to fight back 
and soon, he developed a fascination with fear itself. He developed his fear methods that resulted in the deaths of the boys who bullied him in school. Having taken care of that, Jonathan then set his sights on his great-grandmother. Mary Keeney was locked inside the family chapel, and she fell victim to the same chemical that she had used on Jonathan. Soon enough, she was attacked by the wild crows, which resulted in her death. The skull that Batman had discovered in the chapel was that of Mary Keeney's. He had also found a letter where she spoke about having grown afraid of Jonathan, proving that Crane had turned the tables on her long before he had got his ultimate revenge. At the same time, the Scarecrow had strapped Professor Pigeon with his lips sealed as he wanted revenge on the man who had destroyed his professional life. Once a star student of Professor Pigeon, Jonathan Crane joined the psychology faculty to work alongside his mentor. After his violent demonstration in class, the eight members of the board, Professor Pigeon included, voted to fire Crane from his job. However, they were given a chance to defend him, considering Crane's students had excelled in class due to his teaching tactics. Despite that, Professor Pigeon did not stand up for Crane and voted to fire him. And that was the incident that led to him getting strapped, ready to face the wrath of his former student. Professor Pigeon also harbored an interest in Roman debauchery. Crane used his fear toxin on the man to make him experience Roman brutality in his mind. Soon, the professor's mind conjured an image of him being strapped to a pole in front of an audience while a hungry lion pounced on him. Naturally, he succumbed to cardiac arrest. Marion Keeney, Jonathan's grandmother, had become a socialite. She went by the name Francesca Dove and had thrown a party that Batman and Robin had attended. During the party, the attendees witnessed Marion get torn apart by birds, but Batman saw through the illusion and learned that Marion had died as a result of self-inflicted wounds. Meanwhile, after killing Professor Pigeon, Scarecrow reached his father, Gerald Crane. Gerald was tied to a chair and balanced on the beam of an unfinished building. He was then injected with Scarecrow's fear toxin, causing Gerald to get disbalanced from fear and fall. However, Batman had reached the scene by then and he had managed to save Gerald. Unfortunately, Robin ended up falling victim to Crane's fear toxin and had a hallucination of two Batman fighting when the Dark Knight fought Scarecrow. Robin tried to break the fight and mistakenly attacked the real Batman, allowing Scarecrow to escape. However, Batman had cracked the case and found out that Crane was targeting all the people in his life, which left Karen Keeney, his mother, the last victim. But by the time Batman reached her, Crane had already killed Karen's husband, Charlie Jarvis, and their infant daughter. Before he could kill Karen, Batman stopped him and then pulled the strings for Crane to fall victim to his own toxin. Unfortunately, Crane began to have hallucinations of his own abusive great-grandmother and jumped off a cliff to avoid her. Scarecrow's Fear Gas What is it and how it works? The fear gas has terrorized one too many people throughout the DC Universe. Even the likes of Superman has fallen victim to it, proving that it's a product that requires high skill and caliber to produce. It took Jonathan Crane years of research and study in the science of fear to develop it, thus birthing this dangerous hallucinogenic drug. Scarecrow initially used sprays and smoke to attack with the fear toxin. The gas worked by entering the victim's bloodstream after it was inhaled. It then turned their worst fears into reality, or so they believed. He went on to create pills that allowed him to project fear into the minds of his opponents. He then came up with a potent chemical liquid that triggered the victim's worst phobias. The fumes from the toxin were moderately effective as well, but nothing worked nearly as well as direct contact with the fluid, prompting Scarecrow to use straws for a while as a decoy. This was followed by the development of a fear pheromone, which affected not just the person who the toxin was injected into, but also the people that they came into contact with. The toxin turned all the infected people insane for the next six days. In the case of all the previously mentioned toxins, Batman was able to concoct an antidote after coming into contact with the gas himself, thus nullifying Scarecrow's efforts. Ultimately, Crane fell victim to his own fear pheromone and ended up in Arkham Asylum after being scared of himself. Later, Crane created a handheld skull-shaped device that induced and projected fear. The device emitted high frequency that could alter the nervous system by instilling the victims with crippling fear. In the New Earth continuity, Scarecrow stuck to the fear gas as his weapon of choice to act as a criminal. However, he also developed a counter-fear gas that made the victims reckless as a result of having no fear at all. This removed the fear of consequences from their minds and turned them into dangerous criminals. Scarecrow also created special versions of the toxin that made the victims go through their most traumatic memories and specific phobias. However, Scarecrow's toxin has a surprise weakness. It was weak against water. Scarecrow had created the toxin to be airborne, making it easier to spread. However, it was also water-soluble. Nightwing was able to dispel the gas by activating the sprinkler system, which meant that mass installation of sprinklers in and around Gotham City would render the Scarecrow's fear toxin useless within the city. No, stay away! Stay away, please! No! 
Scarecrow in Batman the Animated Series Scarecrow has made a prominent impact as an antagonist in Batman the Animated Series. Due to the show's episodic nature, Scarecrow has appeared as a part of separate storylines instead of being interwoven into a linear storyline. He appeared for the first time in the 10th episode known as Nothing to Fear from the show's first season. Similar to his comic counterpart, Jonathan Crane goes around intoxicating Gotham City with his hallucination causing fear toxin, and unfortunately for Batman, he ends up on the receiving end of this unusual weapon. The show begins with a charity book signing at Gotham's University, where the attendees discuss the string of robberies and incidents of vandalism that have been happening around the university. In this event, Bruce Wayne comes face to face with Dr. Long, who attended university alongside Dr. Thomas Wayne back in the day. Dr. Wayne apparently had big plans for his son from the beginning. When Bruce hears of this from Dr. Long, he talks about being pleased with the profits that Wayne Enterprises has made under him, only for Dr. Long to ridicule him. He believed that Bruce was nothing more than a rich playboy, who was a disgrace to the Wayne family. Soon, a helicopter arrives at the university, and with it comes a man dressed as a scarecrow with his goons. The guard of the university becomes a victim of the fear toxin, which triggers his arachnophobia. The man sees himself covered in spiders, and is horrified while everyone else is left bewildered, as they can see nothing. Soon, Scarecrow and his goons head to the vault and steal some money, but Scarecrow makes it very clear that what he seeks is not money, but revenge. Batman jumps into the chaos to stop them, but is soon shot by Scarecrow's drugged dart. But before Scarecrow can escape after lighting the place on fire, Batman grabs the scrap of his mask, only to be disoriented soon after. Batman tries to escape, but is hit with visions of his father calling him a disgrace. The sprinklers get activated, and the fires die down, but Batman still finds himself in a weakened spot. But after James Gordon, Harvey Bullock, and the police arrive to the place, Batman manages to disappear of his own accord. In a different scene that focuses on Scarecrow and his men while they watch the news, Scarecrow talks about his past entanglements with Gotham University. His origin story remains the same with Jonathan Crane having been a psychology professor in the university who got fired for taking his experiments in class too far. Infuriated by the action of his superiors and peers, Crane wishes to destroy Gotham University to show its faculty members the true face of horror. Meanwhile, Bruce Wayne tries to learn more about the mask scrap but the gas continues to take a toll on him. He gets visions of his father calling him a failure, and journalist Summer Gleason reporting on Batman's failure in preventing the fire fiasco in Gotham University or catching the perpetrator. Despite having gone through so much, Gotham University hosts a museum benefit, which once again gets hijacked by Scarecrow. He attacks with his gas, giving the people present a taste of the hallucinations. He then takes the donation money and directly sprays the toxin on Dr. Long, who soon becomes his prisoner. After Batman arrives to capture the Scarecrow, the dazed members in the event begin to see him as a giant bat, and they begin to panic. They attack him hysterically, delaying his advances and sending Scarecrow further ahead. However, Batman proves to be more resilient than that and follows the Scarecrow in pursuit, and yet, he continues to be plagued by hallucinations of his father calling him a failure. But Batman cannot succumb to fear. He is the guy who is fear. And as such, he conquers his fear, as he gives himself the self-assurance that he needs. Soon enough, Batman catches up to Dr. Long and saves him, and then summons his Batmobile. In the car, Batman's computer is done with the analysis of the scrap of the mask. It is revealed that only five places in Gotham manufacture the chemicals in the mask, prompting Batman to cross-reference the new information with the employees of the Gotham University. He hits the bullseye with Crane Chemicals, a place founded by former Gotham University professor Jonathan Crane. At the chemical plant, Scarecrow removes his mask only to fall victim to his own fear toxin. Soon, he begins to see visions of being attacked by a giant bat, which is followed by the real Batman coming for him. In the end, Scarecrow is apprehended and sent to Arkham Asylum. Scarecrow returns in the 19th episode, known as Fear of Victory, where Dick Grayson's Robin made his debut in the series. In this episode, many a sportsman in Gotham City receive mysterious letters and end up having frightening visions of their next games. The visions cause them to lose the matches, while a bookie betting on the match results begins to win all the money. The strange incidents soon call for the involvement of Batman and Robin. The episode begins with a scene in one of Gotham University's dormitories. Dick Grayson's roommate, Brian Rogers, who plays football for the university, expresses his nervousness as he has a high likelihood of being drafted by a professional football team. Meanwhile, they listen to the news, which report on a series of incidents where several seasoned athletes fumble their games as they begin to suffer from panic attacks amidst the matches. Something seems to be scaring them out of their mind, which results in them losing 
even when they shouldn't have. Soon, Brian receives a mysterious telegram that wishes him luck and mentions that only a fool knows no fear. The roommates find it weird, but move on soon after. During the match, Brian seems to be in a terrible state as Gotham University loses. While the opponents charge at Brian, he sees them as horrifying monsters trying to attack him. As Brian gets terrified beyond his wits, he is soon taken to the infirmary, while Dick Grayson is left confused. That night, Batman and Robin come across some regular robbers atop a high building. With their grappling hooks, they try to stop them, but Robin finds himself in a similar position as Brian. He doesn't see monsters, but he strangely begins to have a ridiculous fear of heights. His grip loosens, and he shakes from fear. Ultimately, Batman has to handle the entire thing alone with great difficulty. Batman finds the situation with Robin and Brian succumbing to unusual fears on the same day quite suspicious. Soon, he heads to their dorm in Gotham University to investigate the matter where he notices their telegram. Turns out, a strange powder was present in the telegram, and Batman brings it to the Batcave with him. Assuming the substance to be a problem, Batman tests it on a cat in captivity who is soon introduced to a rat. At first, the cat is excited to see the rat, that it can attack and eat, but soon it gets scared out of its wits, even though it is clearly the predator in this position. Batman soon realizes that the substance gets triggered once the victim's adrenaline spikes up. Then, they begin to have hallucinations of their fears, which makes them act super out of character, and considering the nature of the chemical, the Dark Knight quickly realizes that Scarecrow has something to do with this. However, he is supposed to be in Arkham Asylum. Batman and Robin soon go to the asylum, where they realize that Scarecrow is missing from his cell. It is also evident that the security guard has something to do with it. Meanwhile, Scarecrow, dressed in mysterious attire, collects his winning money of over $28,000, making the owner suspicious over how he has won each and every bet. However, the man sends out one of his lackeys to follow the mysterious man. When he tries to force the secret of his winnings out of Scarecrow, Crane uses his telegram on the lackey, causing the thug to fall victim to a state of fear. The next day, Batman finds the thug from the previous encounter scared and hiding under the bed in the police infirmary. After a discussion, Batman realizes that Scarecrow has been fixing games, betting against the groups that are less likely to win, and then using his fear toxin to put the better groups at a high disadvantage. Meanwhile, Robin is still struggling with the effects of the fear toxin, and as such, he practices walking over cliffs to aid Batman better. Later, at the stadium, he spots Scarecrow putting his toxin in a helmet. After the man leaves, Robin gets rid of the helmet. As such, during the match Scarecrow has bet on, Crane begins to think that the toxin's effect has gotten delayed. Soon, he is caught by Batman. To win over them, he uses a test tube to threaten them. The tube had the fear substance, and Crane threatened to drop it and cause mass panic. As it falls off, Robin defeats his fear of heights and catches the test tube, leaving Scarecrow with no choice but to run. But once again, he gets apprehended. Scariest Things That Scarecrow Has Ever Done Dr. Jonathan Crane is a lunatic of the highest level and as such, has caused mass hysteria several times. His actions have resulted in the deaths of many, directly or indirectly, and he has done everything for personal gain. Apart from killing his grandmother and other family members, experimenting on his students, and trying to poison all of Gotham City, Scarecrow has done some other heinous things. So, here are a list of some of them. Number 1. Creating a Lethal Glove One of the most recent depictions of the character has created a glove with several needles protruding from the end of every finger. These needles hit the victims of Crane with his fear toxin. The glove also takes after that of Freddy Krueger from A Nightmare on Elm Street, as the two antagonists love to play the villain by terrorizing others with fear. Number 2. Sewing His Face One fine day, Dr. Jonathan Crane decided that he wants to look like a scarecrow without the costume. As such, he stitched his own lips to mimic the character, proving just how obsessed he is with instilling fear and panic. On another note, the stitches are moderately loose, allowing Crane to speak. Number 3. Introducing a Child to Venom One of the worst things that Scarecrow has ever done has been kidnapping a child named Colin Wilkes in Batman Heart of Hush. What makes it worse is that Scarecrow uses Bane's drug of choice, Venom, to strengthen Colin. He then sends the boy after Batman, knowing that the Dark Knight will be unwilling to harm the little boy. Even though Batman handles the situation quickly, Scarecrow using a child and a drug to reach his objective is very low, even for him. Oh. Having trouble. What makes Scarecrow so deadly? With a long list of heinous activities, a perchant for causing hysteria, and a creepy appearance, Scarecrow is one of the deadliest foes of Batman, so much so that Batman always has a tough time against him. Several reasons lead to the man having a great track record against the Dark Knight's crusade on crime. 
His intellect. Dr. Jonathan Crane is a borderline genius and one of Gotham's most brilliant minds. He used his intellect and knowledge to create a toxin that can render superpowered beings weak. He then perfected and upgraded the formula over and over, pressing his foes with each and every move of his. As such, his formula has only gotten stronger with time, thanks to Dr. Crane's abilities and knowledge of paranoia, so much so that his toxin had once caused Superman to see Lois Lane as Doomsday. He also killed the love of his life, who was pregnant and snapped out of the hallucination only after she was on the verge of dying. So now you understand step one in how I fix an athletic contest. He is a one-man army. Dr. Crane doesn't have jokes or any tricks up his sleeves. He cannot best Batman in combat. He doesn't have the greatest and most high-tech weapons at his disposal. However, he doesn't need any of it. His airborne fear toxin is enough, as it can kill several birds with one stone. You're not dying. It just feels like you are. My toxin is filling your lungs. Drowning you in your greatest fears. What can we see? Who gets under Batman's skin? One of the two characters who operate on fear, Scarecrow is able to instill more fear within Batman than the other way around. Scarecrow forces Batman to look into his fractured mind to relive his worst memories and to experience his worst fears. As such, his psychological damage renders Batman vulnerable. When it comes to powers, Dr. Crane doesn't have much going on for him. However, he seems to be immune to the fear toxin at this point due to the constant exposure to the chemical. Other than that, Dr. Crane is a highly capable man, excelling in several fields aside from psychology. For example, he has harassed his knowledge in chemicals to create his own fear toxin. He has also made it a very versatile weapon, often upgrading it to suit his needs better, to the point that his victims have suffered heart attacks due to the experience of false terror. Turns out, Scarecrow is also a manic martial artist, as he uses his long limbs to inflict damage upon his opponents via a violent dance. His dance style seems to be inspired by that of Ichabod Crane's from The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Hold still. Frightening appearances of Scarecrow in other media. Being a very popular antagonist in Batman's rogues gallery, the Scarecrow has appeared in several forms of media. He made a notable appearance in Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight trilogy, where his character was played by Killian Murphy. In Batman Begins, he acted as the film's primary antagonist, who started off as a head in Arkham Asylum. However, it was soon revealed that he was working alongside Ra's al Ghul and wished to destroy Gotham City. As such, he developed a toxin to poison the entire city. He had a cameo appearance in The Dark Knight, where he was a drug peddler who spiked his own supply with his fear toxin. In The Dark Knight Rises, he made another appearance as a judge in a court set up by Bane. The Scarecrow also appeared in several animated films, such as Batman Gotham Knight, where he lived in the sewers. He appeared in Batman Assault on Arkham as a prisoner released by the Joker. He became a member of the Joker's gang in Batman Unlimited Monster Mayhem. He also appeared in Batman Hush, Lego DC Comics Superheroes Justice League, Gotham City Breakout, Justice League Throne of Atlantis, Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Happy Halloween Scooby-Doo. When it comes to cartoon shows, Scarecrow appeared in other shows bearing Batman the Animated Series. He was present in the new Batman Adventures, which is a continuation of the aforementioned series. He also appeared in Batman the Brave and the Bold as the primary antagonist in the episode Trials of the Demon. In terms of live-action television series, a young Jonathan Crane appeared in Gotham in the episode The Fearsome Dr. Crane. He also appeared in the third season of Titans, where he portrayed a Gotham City supervillain turned police commissioner. They scream and they cry. This is your game now. Marvelous Verdict Scarecrow is one of Batman's most dangerous foes. The villain is able to instill fear in everyone's hearts, even without his fear toxin. Unlike the other villains who go after certain individuals or even Batman, he often targets the masses. As such, no one is safe from Scarecrow. What are your thoughts on this supervillain? Let us know in the comments below. And if you liked our content, then please leave us a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, I'm Rylan with Marvelous Videos. Have a good one and be safe.